The boys are off extended holiday weekend as we have reached July, which is bizarre. July 1st, the 35th anniversary of this radio station, and we will get into that in a little while as well. Myself, Sal Licata with you until 10 o'clock. And it's so funny because when you get set to do these shows, you think, boy, oh boy, what are we going to do here? What are we going to do there? And this is one of those days, I, there's nothing to talk about. And so I guess for the next four hours, Sal and I will have to figure it out, yeah. and navigate our way through. Sal Licata, good morning. How are you? Good, Jerry. I couldn't wait to get in today. Shut up, this is Sal. One of those I wish I was on last night. The overnight, I couldn't wait. I had to get a nice little night of sleep, but it'll be worth the wait today. So we have plenty mm. to get into. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, of course the Yankees, you do. The, oh, the Mets, that three-game you know, losing streak. What you, are we doing? You, and I remember you specifically saying one morning when I saw you in the newsroom, yeah. oh, I had to turn you off. Why is that? You're, couldn't take you. You're, yeah, you're bashing the Nets. And now you know why, because I can't stand KD and Kyrie, those two losers that ruined a franchise that was doing things the right way they handed over the keys to the superstars and this is what you get yeah you have a boomer any reaction from boomer <laughs> oh man i mean just this is a yes. th- this is as disastrous as bad, bad this is and bad. embarrassing as a now they were really a new york team it'd be even worse imagine that but this is just a disgrace for the nets lol nets yeah um sorry jerry because so I know you uh, here's all right here's my positive spin Boomer and Gio are in here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because this would be a really difficult morning to get through because for the last, you know, two years, three years, whatever it is, you know, Boomer has uh, destroyed the Nets and understandably yes! so. Yeah, mm-hmm, and I get it. Here's, let me say this. I am, the, the Kyrie thing is bizarre on every level. I've sat here and killed him and I have backed him in, in different ways. And it's like every time I watch him or listen to him on a podcast, I'm like, that's not the guy that is so strange, bizarre, and has weird requests and is a pain in the ass. And then he becomes a pain in the ass. Where I'm really disappointed is in Durant because I thought I, re- I thought he was different. I thought part of him coming to Brooklyn, because he could have gone to a lot of different places, as you know. I really thought him coming to Brooklyn was, you know what? I won in Golden State, but it wasn't good enough for everybody because I joined a championship team already. Brooklyn's never won. The Nets have never won. If I can go there and win, and I really thought he signed the four-year extension. I thought he was here for the long haul. I thought he was different. I didn't think he was going to be well, one of these changed. guys. Oh, but what changed? The, Nothing. The, the, no, the fact that they didn't, the owners oh, didn't want to make a commitment on. to the crazy guy, Kyrie. But they did. They offered him two years fully guaranteed and then a couple of years on the back end that he had to play. That's not making a commitment? It is to me. Look, they wanted more control. Look, f- the first reason he chose Brooklyn was because he wanted to live in New York. Both him and Kyrie want to live in New York, but they look at the Knicks and say, well, I don't want to go there. Do you want to go there? No, I don't want to go there. So, hey, there's a second option. Let's go to Brooklyn. That's how they end up in Brooklyn. And then they don't even want that. They can't handle that. Kyrie wants to do him, and that's fine. Whatever. You don't want to play basketball. You want to make a priority. That's fine. You do you. But there are going to be repercussions from that. So what team, what owner in his right mind would extend long-term to Kyrie Irving? That's number one. And then Durant's thinking, well, if there's issues here, let me go somewhere else. Because he's soft. He ran from Oklahoma City to go join the Warriors to win a championship, easy championships, and then he wanted to team up with his buddy Kyrie because he wanted to live in New York City and enjoy and take advantage of everything that that has to offer. And now when things are going wrong or maybe there's some doubt about the future, he bolts. And where is he looking to go, Jer? Oh, the sun. Shocking. I wonder why. Oh, the heat. Wow. Shocking. I wonder why. Again, the easy way out for a soft superstar in Kevin Durant. Which comes back to my point. that That's not what this was. This was the Nets. This wasn't... This wasn't a championship-ready team. He may say what you want, Phoenix, wherever he goes, I whatever. We'll figure that out, and we'll talk about that throughout the course of the morning. Wherever he goes, he elevates his team immediately into the top four or five in the conference, no matter where he goes. I mean, can you? Would you argue with that? Say what you forget yeah, about all the other player. stuff. You're right. He is unbelievable. Anyone, wherever he goes, regardless of you know talent around him, they could be a championship. Hundred percent. I mean, at least they're in the conversation if he is on that team. And that's why, to me, the whole Kyrie thing, you kind of figure when he opted in, you know, my thought was one of two things is going to happen. You're going to get a true, maybe you trade him. I didn't think you could, but maybe you trade him. All right, you set that aside. 
You have him on a one-year deal. He had to come out and play if he wanted that next four. You see the money these guys are getting. So if he wanted that, he's got to be a good soldier, a good citizen, do the right thing, play a lot of games. Go win a championship. Win a championship, go deep in the playoffs, but prove that, you know what, he's not that guy that we thought he was. And instead, you get this. I so I get home yesterday. <laughs> I saw your tweet. This is great. Well, I couldn't believe I, I couldn't believe it. So everything's oh, so fine yesterday. Nine when I found out, I yeah, I, I, I know you are. Oh, 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 I know you are. <laughs> so I, I I legit thought that the Nets have work to do, but you're going to get. I really thought you get the best version of Kyrie for one year before he's gone, and I really thought he's gone after next year. But I thought twenty two twenty three, you're going to get a great season. I also thought the Nets would do something somewhere, somehow, to add to this team as well. Plus, Joe Harris is coming back. So there were things that you liked about them for the 22-23 season. So I go home yesterday. Everything's great. Go right to get my hair cut. Everything's fantastic. Make one stop at the store. I go home. I lay down around. I get Because I didn't sleep much the night before because of baseball. So I guess it was around 12, 45, 1 o'clock. I knew we had the Carton and Roberts comedy show last night, which, by the way, was awesome. And Aaron Berg, who opened it, if you don't know this guy, hilarious. So it was a really good time. Anyway, I take about a what a, equated to about a three hour nap, maybe a little bit less than that, two forty five. I I don't even check my phone. Take a shower, get dressed. I look at my phone, and the first thing I see is some guy laughing at me. <laughs> yes, like you know the the emoji laughing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I and know. And it was. I wonder what Jerry's going to have to say about Durant now. I'm like, oh, well, what did he do now? And I'm thinking, did he do something stupid? Right. Not thinking he has to be traded. So immediately I just Google Kevin Durant and I see it. I'm like, my jaw was, uh, what? Huh? And, Not him? And don't you think that, and you're right, Net fans and apologists for KD forever. I wonder how they feel right now. We're all oh, KD, he could do no wrong, and that's their guy. And I get it. But this is why, Jared, to me, it's a, forget about even the individuals. And you can question Kyrie, certainly. KD, you cannot. If he wants to go to your franchise, you, you take him. However, I always, and I've stood by this my entire life, like I never was a believer in letting the players, I don't care if it's LeBron James, doesn't matter to me. You can, you know what? I'll deal with it without him. You don't want to come here, that's fine. But I run things the way that I run things as an organization. Pat Riley does it better than anybody else. Yeah. He does it. He'll get the superstar player, but he's not letting them take control of the organization the way the Nets did with Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving. Whether it's firing the coach, whether it's trading certain players, whether it's just giving them the key to the kingdom to do whatever the hell they want to, because now look at what they did. They're ruining the franchise because KD wants out. It's ridiculous. You can't. It's a it's a, a bottom line principle. Principle, if you are an owner, and I hope Joe Sai now learned from this and would never do something as stupid as this again, as appealing as it may be, as tempting as it may be, resist the temptation. You cannot, under any circumstance, let the players run your organization. Well, that's another conversation, but the problem with what you're saying is, did you see some of these deals yesterday? Yeah, I get it. Did you well, see what Nikola Jokic got? Yeah, what, $250 million or whatever? 260 Yeah, okay, right. He's going to make $62 million in his last year. Right. I mean, the money is, is ridiculous, and you're getting to a point where they make so much. They are the franchise. And I agree with you. I hate it. I don't like it. All of that is true. Unfortunately, they're partners, Sal. These guys aren't just players anymore. But they it is are a little partners. different, isn't it, Jared? When you let, oh, yeah, you want to come here? Oh, sure, please. I agree. You, you sell yourself out. Like, you know what? You beg and plead and try to get him here. And the Nets had something going, Jared. I know they I, did. I like the Nets with Atkinson and Jared well, Allen and ho- Carol. All right, Levert. so hold on with that. So, first of all, the, a- Atkinson, and they will tell you, Boomer and Gio will tell you, I had had enough of him prior to them firing him because, it, to me, he took it to a certain point. I had no problem with making the move. The problem was the next move they made. But that having been said, Zoo, can you do me a favor, Zoo? I know Courtney's in there. Give me one second. Can you give me – I'm going to take you back to January – what was the date? January 13th, 2021. Does that date ring a bell for you? No. That is the day that the Nets acquired who? Harden. James Harden. Boomer and, uh, uh, excuse me, Carton and Roberts called me. So I think Craig thought I was going to be, woo, very excited. I'm going to play you two clips okay. to your point, which you just said. Give me the first one, and then I'll call for the second one. This is me with Carton and Roberts right after the Nets acquired James Harden. Jerry, what's up, buddy? What are we doing? What are we doing? How happy are you? Honestly, you just got James Harden. Aren't you no, pumped? No, no, I'm not happy. I'm not happy at all because, you know what, this was a likable team. Kyrie's gone. I love Durant. I like this team. They're gone. 
Three first-round draft picks, gone. Four. Jared Allen, gone. Karis LeVert, gone. And then give me the second one, because this is to your point, and this is what we've seen now over the last year. And what happened to culture? Wasn't that a big word we're throwing around? What happened to that? BS. Where, all the good guys are gone. So, I Harden, hate, by the way, he won. He's, he's out. He, he did he, win. He read the situation and said, I got to get the hell out of here. That is the day that everything changed. Agreed. And that was when you knew. That was when you knew that it was over. I hated doing that, bringing in Harden. Uh, again, Kyrie questionable, but once they made Harden, I agree with you, Jerry, it was over. And then you know why Evan flipped out, why you were upset about it. And then people were trying to make it like Harden, though, was the problem. It was the trade for Harden 100%. that was the problem. 100%. And then Harden saw the room when he got here and said, this is a disaster for whatever reason. He didn't come out and say it, but if you use a little no, common No, he sense, was a disaster. No, no, no. He didn't play. No, but he didn't like the situation with, well, what do you mean? With Kyrie, did he play? At least Harden was hurt. No, but he, James Harden had a chance. He had a a chance to take that team under his control at one point and he quit he quit on that road trip and he quit on the team because Durant was out he didn't want I don't know he didn't want the pressure of being the lone superstar out there all you needed him to do was toe the line win a couple of games and as soon as Durant got back things would have been okay he quit I think Harden looked at it and now again I don't know this I'm just using a little common sense here from afar I think Harden looked at this situation and said, this, I, I can't play with Kyrie. This is a mess of a situation. I need to get out of here and go somewhere where I'm comfortable. Think about Harden opting out of a $46 million deal. I know he's going to get more from the Sixers. Sure. But he's not going to get a mega deal. It I don't know been, what he's going to get. It would have been similar. But but Harden, at this point in his career, where he didn't look like the same player, whether it's with the Nets or the Sixers. He was terrible. Turning the down $46 million because he's going to get. He's got a, his pal there running the show. Well, I'm just saying. Kyrie could have done the same thing, right? But nobody would give him that long-term deal. Nobody wants but to give him again, a, the, the X factor is Daryl Morey. You don't think James Harden has an assurance of some semblance that he's going to get a three-year deal? Even if he's not getting forty-six per no, year. No, but all right, no. But what if he gets three years, a hundred million dollars? Right, which I would assume he's going to get. Well, why? Yeah, so you're right. making less this year, but overall you're getting a hundred million dollars over the next few, as opposed to one year you don't play so great this year. Then he's in Kyrie's situation next year. No one's going to pay him that kind of money. Yeah, I just think that Harden is in a much better situation, and, and he knows it. And he won. He got out of this mess. How? I mean, what if he stayed here, Jared, and was like, yeah, you know what, I'm all in. And then all of a sudden this blows up because Kyrie's unhappy. KD's like, well, you know what, if Kyrie's unhappy. Well, what if Harden, wanna... forget Kyrie for a second. What if Harden and Durant are at their tip-top shape? Right, but it, the, the, you can win with that. The thing, he didn't. To me, the thing that changed with Durant is that the way the organization treated Kyrie. Which I don't understand. Well, he, his, I don't that's know his best why. friend. I, no, no, no. I know that. But I also understand when when I listen to the podcast, when you say it's a man's business, I'm not getting involved, you can't then all of a sudden be like, oh, that's my guy. You well, can't on one hand say I've got nothing to say and then all of a sudden say now I've got a lot to say. Well, maybe you could say I just don't like the way that the uh, you know the front office, the owner is treating him and I I just want to go somewhere else. I mean How have they treated him badly? Oh, look, you're I don't I, I think they shouldn't have brought him in, so I give him credit for saying, "You know what? You can't be a part-time player. Hey, you know what? We've had enough. We're not committing to you long term. I'm not giving you that contract that you want. So basically, screw you. You either opt in and we'll deal with it or opt out and see you later. I don't care." Finally, but the problem is, now in that process, maybe they turned off Kevin Durant. And Durant, like the baby that he is, he wants out. They gave him four years. They gave him everything they wanted. The Nets, to me, are not at fault for this specific day. This is all on Durant. This is this a great day, Irving. isn't it, Jer? I, no, no. This is a great not, day, it's not. isn't it? Oh, all it's those not. Nets. Jer, no. Jer, earmuffs and here. It's not, about, it's not about Kyrie. It's about uh, the Durant thing. That's what bothers me, not no, Kyrie. I, no, I get it. Earmuffs for a second because it's going to get nasty. Oh! You Nets fans who wanted to taunt the Knicks fan. Oh, the Knicks fan is jealous. Oh, the Knicks this, the Knicks that. You think the Knicks fan is jealous now? Where KD begs out, they ruin the franchise. It's an embarrassment of epic proportions. I mean, you think back in New York sports history, this is it. They couldn't even, Jerry, they got swept. They couldn't even get to an Eastern Conference final, let alone championship. A disastrous three years, and it's over before you could blink. The superstar, Nets world, Nets this, Nets that. See ya. And I do think they'll be better off because of it. I do too. But I do Actually. enjoy those fans now taking this one on the chin, talking trash with nothing to show for it. All right. Sorry, Jerry. Well, no, 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 no. They, they will have something to show for it at some point because well, they're going to the trade. Championship. You're going to trade Durant. I mean, Sean Marks, according to every report I saw, is if you want. Remember this. They don't have to trade him. What, is he going to sit out and not play? Right. 
He's got a four-year deal, fully guaranteed. And Sean Marks, according to the things I read, and I don't know what's true and what's not anymore, but according to what I read, two superstars and draft picks to start. So it's they. this is not going to be a bad team next year. The problem is yeah, be, you you're know, not going like to have the Knicks. They'll be all right. No, they'll be better than that. You think so? Yeah, I think they'll be better than I'm that. I'm not so sure. Well, uh, you still have Julius Randle last time I checked. Jalen Brunson, really w- baby. Great. Hang your hat Jaylen. on that. Good player, good move. The no, good move. I'm just kidding. I, but, but I do think the Knicks will be more. whatever. I, I don't know. And what I do the think R.J. Do. Barrett is about to be a superstar. I love R.J. Barrett. But until you tell me Julius Randle is going to come back and play like he played, you know, two years ago, two seasons ago, good luck. Well, I want to see the return. I want to see what Brooklyn gets for Kyrie. Correct. I, obviously, like you said, with KD, if it's not just about – and by the way, we're talking about the Harden stuff. How about those – the actual – the draft picks that Houston has now where they control basically the Nets' yeah. mm-hmm. next five first-round picks? Yep. That's got to be a situation where hence, obviously they need to get first-round picks hence back. Hence why if you're trading Kevin Durant, you need a haul back right. for him. Not just picks, but players. And I mean players that are going to step in and win. And yeah. you, you're going to have that opportunity because it's like, the problem, I don't want to call it Herschel Walker, but it might be just like that. But the problem that they have is that, and I get what you're saying, he's got a four-year guaranteed contract, but when he starts saying, well, I prefer this team and that team, those teams already, the Nets come out and say, or at least according to reports, and by the way, who the hell knows what's true, what's not, because there's no misinformation idea. all over the place. But according to reports, the Nets say, well, we're not trading Durant to the Suns without Devin Booker. And there's no way the Suns right. are going to do that. Hold well, firm. Right, of, of course, but then what's the Nets' leverage? They, Here's they the say, leverage. You have a contract. Right, but they could say we could trade him anywhere, but other teams will be like, yeah, but he doesn't want to come here, so why am I giving up X amount of picks and my star player if he doesn't want to come here? Well, they're going to have to figure that out, and he's going to have to right. figure it out. Maybe he doesn't want to play ever again. Right, and then they and good, then in that good. case, then they both lose. So here's what I would do. You're exactly right. And I don't right. believe that. I would forget about the return right now if I'm the Nets. i draw the line in the sand and say, you know what? You've held us hostage long enough. I don't give a crap what you want. I'm trading you for the package that I want. Otherwise, Yuri Rand is sitting out. Agreed. I don't care. End just, of story. Just because his preferred destination is Phoenix doesn't mean that's where he's going. Matter of fact, I tell him, you're not going to Phoenix or Miami. I don't even care if they gave me the best package. I'll, you'll go where we're telling you to go. You want to request a trade? Good. I'll trade you when I'm ready to trade you, where I'm ready to trade you. That's what I would have told him. All right. We are just getting started. It's Sal and Jerry in for Boomer and Geo. 